What's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got this a pulley on a frictionless axle, has a shape of a uniform solid disc, uh, and it's, it's dropping this mass down, and it gives us that, um, how far must the stone fall so that the pulley has 4.5 joules of kinetic energy? Okay, so how do we get started on this? Well, what I like to do is I like to use my mass energy formula, or not mass energy, work energy formula. Okay, so work is equal to change in kinetic energy or work non-conservative, all right? So it says here, this is uh, frictionless. Work non-conservative usually is what friction is, it's air resistance. In this problem, we're not gonna have any of that. So we can say zero is equal to change in kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, right? What all do we have for kinetic energy? Well, for this, we have our, uh, our pulley has kinetic energy. Um, the mass on it is gonna have uh, gravitational potential energy. That's something we have to take into consideration. And the velocity at the end is going to make uh, or kinetic energy, right? So uh, it's change in kinetic energy, so that'll be, or, or yeah, change in energy, basically. So it'll be kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. And then we have, say, we have K rotational. So K rotational final minus K rotational initial. And then we also have uh, uh, gravitational potential energy, so plus... Uh, gravity initial or final minus u gravity initial. So let's see what we got. What can we do? So it's starting at rest. So there's going to be no kinetic energy at the beginning. Same thing. There's starting at rest. There's going to be no rotational kinetic energy at the beginning. There's going to be no uh, velocity or angular velocity. And then we're looking at the change in this. Um, we can go ahead and say that it ends at zero, and it starts at some position height. So if it ends at zero, its height's going to be zero. So this is going to become zero. So then what we're going to end up with is zero is equal to k, uh, kinetic energy final plus uh, rotational kinetic energy final minus gravitational potential energy initial. OK, so we have all of our uh, energies here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move this over to the other side, and then I'm going to expand each one of these. So gravitational potential energy is mass, gravity, height, initial. And this is the mass of uh, the rock or the, the stone. I'm just going to label that A. That's equal to the kinetic energy of the stone. So 1 half mass of A, velocity final squared, and then plus K rotational final. This is the, this is the number that they gave us. They gave us 4.5 joules. They say that's how much the stone has. Or they say that's how much the pulley has. So we don't need to expand this anymore. We can just keep that as is. So we want height, right? It's saying how much, or what's the height? So height, if we divide, we get a 0 0.5 mass of A velocity final squared plus, uh, you know, we have this, K rotational, is equal to gravity divided by mass of A. Okay, so we have gravity, mass of A, K rotational, mass of A. We don't have height and we don't have velocity. So we need to find one of these. We need to find velocity. How are we going to find uh, the velocity of the rock, right? Okay, so to find the velocity, we're going to uh, write out our formula for angular, uh, you know, kinetic energy. So k rotational is equal to one half i w squared. All right, angular velocity that is. Okay, so then we can expand this. So k rotational is equal to one half. Now all these different shapes are going to have different moments of inertia. Uh, for the solid disk, it's going to be one half mass radius squared, then angular velocity squared. So we can combine this, we're trying to find velocity, right? Um, so uh, velocity is equal to radius times angular acceleration. So if you take the square root of both sides, or you square both sides, you get this, and you'll notice that this is the same thing as this. So we can go ahead and just substitute that in. So k rotational is equal to one over four mass velocity squared. So we have k-rotational, right? That's the number they give us. 4.5 joules of kinetic energy is what the pulley has. That's its uh, rotational kinetic energy. So if you take 4.5 is equal to 1 over 4, uh, its mass is 2.5 velocity squared. If you multiply the 4 over, you're going to get like 18, and then divide by 2.5. And that's going to give you velocity squared. So that's equal to 7.2 uh, uh, so that's that's the square square root of the velocity. Uh, you could take the square root of it, but it's going to be easier because it's just a velocity squared there. So I'm just going to plug that right in. 
Okay, so then you can just plug in what we got. Height is equal to 0 0.5. Mass of the stone. Um, what is that? I cannot see it. 1.5 kilograms. Uh, yep, so 1.5. And then velocity squared, which is 7.2, plus K rotational, which is uh, 4.5. Uh, and then you divide that by uh, gravity, which is 9.81. Mass of A, which is 1.5. And then height is going to be equal to this, which is 0 0.673 meters. There you go. So that's how you solve this problem. Uh, what do I have to say about this? You got to learn your uh, your work energy theorem. That's really useful in like literally everything you do in physics. So just learn how to use that, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll be able to figure out the rest of it. I mean, it's just like finding stuff, figuring it out, plugging stuff in, see what works. Yeah, so that's how you do this. Uh, good luck on your physics homework, guys. Stick around.